the mirror makes it perfect. My heart proceeds to vanish. The play may have fun. Recording is actually recording. Yeah, it has been. I'm sorry. My uh, Mac screen recording sucks. But anyway, I'm coming at you with a deck profile. This was a deck run by a guy named David Flores in San Antonio at the regional on Saturday. He came in first place with his X Saber deck after Swiss. He and Scott Robertson Page were both undefeated. If you want to see Scott's hero deck profile, I'll leave a link somewhere in the description or in an annotation. But basically, David ran his X Saber deck and just destroyed. It was crazy watching him and how good this deck was for him. So let's get to the deck. I don't really understand X Sabers as much as other players. Like it's never a deck that it's a deck that I've never actually sat down and actually tried to play before. But I understand some of his tech choices, so I'll try to explain them as much as I can. So he ran three Dark Soul, three Ember's Blade, three Full Helm Knight, three Bogart Knight, three Fall Troll, two Pashul, and one Air Bellum. For spells, he ran two Pot of Duality, two Mystical Space Typhoon, a Heavy Book, Reborn, Dark Hole, Mind Control, and an Enemy Controller. And for traps, he ran Triple Gotham's Emergency Call, Double Bottomless, Double Warning, Judgment, Torrential, Reinforced Truth, and Double D Prison. Now, kind of to go over the main deck a little bit before I head over to analyze the side deck and the extra deck. Um, you know, you, you got your basic X Saber stuff. So he ran double Pashul. I remember people only used to run one, but this card's really good, especially since the format slowed down a little bit and a lot more people are attack based than they were like popping combo based or hand loot based, stuff like that. It's probably why he put the maxis in the side instead. I actually need to give a shout out really quick before I forget to Kirby Curbs for giving me or for uploading the deck profile of the guy on to his channel. I will send a link. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I went ahead and used that to get the deck list since my friend, who was also judging Ontario, who was supposed to give me the deck list, actually left his computer in San Antonio at the venue. He's getting it back, but he doesn't have it quite yet, so. Shout out to Kirby Curbs for that. Yeah, I'll leave the video in the description or an annotation somewhere because that's where most of the guy's explanations come from. But the double pastels were. were um, OTK stoppers and stuff like that, just attack stoppers, and tuner, of course. And the Airbellum was in there just to get in there and get some hand advantage. Which, even though it's not as important as it was back in, say, Go Control format, hand advantage is still extremely great, and Airbellum just gets in there for that damage. Now, he also ran Enemy Controller, which Enemy Controller kind of confused me at first, but I realized just how good it is. I mean, there's so many tuners in the deck, it does almost the exact same thing as Mind Control. Like... Plus, you can enemy controller attribute off your Dark Soul and get the Dark Soul effect in the end phase. You, know, you can enemy controller off your Bogart Knight, so you don't have to go for an X Saber Synchro. Or if you summon it and go activate effect, then they, they chain an effect veiler. You just go chain enemy controller, tribute your Bogart Knight, and still steal their monster and get your special summon because effect veiler loses its target. Now, Godwin's Emergency Call, of course. It is an amazing card. If X Sabers get big, I'm sure this card will get hit on a ban list or something like that. But honestly, I don't see X Sabers doing amazing in the next format. But this one was going ham the entire day. And of course, Reinforced Truth. Let's get a level 2 or lower warrior type. You get him. Basically, that's like your only target is your Pashul. Which, if they're trying to OTK and you flip over Reinforced Truth, you just put a Pashul in defense and works out. On to the side deck next, he cited two DD Crows, two Snowman Eater. If you watch Scott Page's deck interview, you realize just how good of a card Snowman Eater is so far in this format, even with no, especially with no defined meta. It's just everyone's attacking and stuff, and everybody's attacking with everything. So you're going to want to run Snowman Eaters to saw those. He cited the Max Seas in case he had to play windups and stuff like that, just stuff that would spam special summons. He cited his third MST. He cited Normal Mana Cross Out. He said he cited it against Plants, which. It was pretty cool. I mean, he did play my friend Ray, who was running plants, and he sighted it in, and the card went to work. So, Trap Stun. Trap Stun is an amazing card, especially in X Sabers, because you just go flip Trap Stun and synchro into high unlay, pop some cards, and get some damage in there. So, they can't, like, bottomless, they can't warning, all that. 
goes and match, this deck is completely Earth, and Shadow Mirror to negate darts, like Dark Worlds and stuff like that. Now another thing I want to point out about his deck completely is that he did not run Effect Veilers, he did not run any kind of hand traps in the main deck, and he didn't run any kind of tech monsters in the main deck. He wanted to keep max consistency going on with his X Sabers, that was his explanation for it. And just from analyzing all the decks that did good, like Heroes and Dark Worlds and stuff, Effect Veiler just wasn't that great of a card to run at this tournament. I mean, it was dead against a lot of stuff. It was live against some things, but mostly dead. Under the extra deck, Catastrophe, Naturia Beast, Double High Lay, Archeon, Gaia Knight, X Saber Souza, Stardust, Scrap Dragon, and Gotems. <coughs> now, I especially enjoy this deck. Like, I have, I've never played it, but one of the things that I really like about it right off the bat is that it's got the ability to synchro into Beast and Barkeon. Any deck that can summon Beast and Barkeon is an extremely powerful deck. I mean, these cards just kill stuff. You summon a Turia Beast against Dark Worlds, and you pretty much win before they do anything. I mean, if they already have their Grappas and stuff going off, then there's not a lot you can do. But that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh! works. And the Exceeds, you ran the Zed Mains, Leviathan. As you can see, there is a plethora of level 3 monsters in this deck, so going into those 3 is very easy. I guess he opted not to run the rank 4s, because his only level 4s were the uh, Bogart Knights. And he ran Swordbreaker and Photon Strike Bouncer. Now, the rank 6s are extremely easy to go into, and especially since the uh, level 3s, like Catastrophe, or the level 5, like Catastrophe, isn't always really easy to go to, especially when you are going level 5, you're mostly going to Terry Beast. The Swordbreaker comes in handy, because you, not only do you have the full, the Hyunlei and the Faltrol in the deck go into him with, but you also have the support cards to help you get out the Hyunlei and Faltrol. Like, you have this to add the Faltrol to hands, you have the cards to Synchro into Hyunlei, and you've got the Gotham's Emergency Sequels to put the Hyunleis back on the board later in the game, so that you can use him or both high on lays to go into your sword breaker or your photon strike bouncer. I really like this guy's deck, I really like his tech choices, and I'm glad he got as far as he did. It proves that it, right now there's no meta, it's just a bunch of stuff running around in the format. I mean, props for innovation of bringing back an old deck that was deemed dead when Rescue Cat got banned. And, uh, that's about it guys, like I said I'll have all the links that I talked about in this video, the link to Scott Page's, um, Scott Page's deck where he got second in Swiss, and to Kirby Curb's video where he actually interviews and gets the deck profile on the guy that ran this deck, David Flores. So, rate, comment, subscribe guys, and peace out.